Western Sizzling is a chain of retail buffet restaurants and steakhouses that opened in 1962. Thank you for your suggestion. Got it. Maybe this here's how you think of Western Sizzling. Rustling up the tender steaks this side of wherever. Well, it's true, but the fact is, man does not live by beef alone. I know I was just as shocked as you are to hear it. So Western Sizzling goes to great lengths to bring you fish. At Western Sizzling, taste the tropics. Direct from Waikiki, the Aloha Aloha Shrimp Spectacular. One taste, you're hooked. Western Sizzlin was founded in Augusta, Georgia in 1962 by Nick Pascarella, a native of Pennsylvania. He was traveling around the country in search of cheap land on which to build a steakhouse and he stopped in Augusta because of a flat tire. It was the tire store employees who convinced him to locate his restaurant in Augusta. What made the Pascarella Steakhouse stand out was his unique way of grilling. If searing the bottom of the steak made it juicy, Pascarella reasoned that adding flames to the top would make them twice as good. He was right, and the world famous flame kiss steak was born. This unique process locks in the flavor as the steak is seared to a savory perfection. Pascarella would eventually build a second restaurant in Augusta, across the street from the first, which would also house the company's headquarters. In 1966, he began to sell franchises of his Western Sizzling concept. Over the next 20 years, the restaurant operation grew to become the second largest steakhouse chain in the country, with 600 units generating some $500 million in annual revenues. Pascarella was hardly a micromanager and took a hands-off approach that allowed franchisees to operate as they saw fit. There was also very little advertising that emanated from the top of the chain. Restaurants and Institutions magazine named it the top steakhouse chain in America in 1984, 1985, and 1987. Near the end of Pascarella's reign, however, same store and system-wide sales grew stagnant and a number of units closed. In addition, the chain lagged well behind the competition in sales per unit. While Ryan's Family Steakhouse averaged $2.3 million per restaurant, Sizzler $1.5 million and Bonanza $1 million, Western Sizzlin generated just $800,000. Moreover, a large number of the stores, perhaps as many as 100, were doing less than $500,000 in annual sales. Nevertheless, Western Sizzlin was a successful chain until Pascarella's death in March of 1988. Following Pascarella's death, his wife Nora and son Edward chose to sell Western Sizzling. Although the chain was struggling with the right management team, it was, in the opinion of many, capable of becoming a category powerhouse. There was no lack of suitors, and interested buyers included the Marriott Corporation. In the end, it was an investment group headed by Pizza Hut co-founder Frank Carney who prevailed with a bid of $95 million in a leveraged buyout. Carney expressed high hopes for the chain, which he hoped to transform into a price value leader in the family steakhouse segment. His five-year plan was to grow the chain to 1,000 units and increase the per-unit sales volume to $1.1 million. To achieve this lofty goal, Carney and his management team quickly moved on a number of fronts. Western Sizzlin introduced a new logo, replacing one that had served the chain for 27 years. It also tried to emulate the competition by downplaying steak and broadening its offerings. In particular, a new 12-item lunch menu that included chicken, fish, and sandwich plates. At the same time, the chain moved away from the food bar concept, opting instead to focus on salads and soups. Western Sizzlin also launched its first national television advertising campaign in 1989 and became much more involved with the franchisees than the company ever had been under Pascarella. 
The franchisee agreement was rewritten and a restaurant evaluation program was instituted. Western Sizzlin developed a prototype restaurants and introduced them into new territories. It expanded into Canada, followed in 1990 with a deal to build Western Sizzlin restaurants in Japan. There was even talk about entering Saudi Arabia. Carney and his management team enjoyed some success, boosting per store sales volume above 900,000, but instead of growing to 1,000 units within five years, the Western Sizzlin chain shrank to 350 within four. Stiff competition in the segment from such chains as Ryan's Family Steakhouse and Golden Corral curtailed Western Sizzlin's growth, forcing many franchisees to change concepts or simply close their doors. Carney's group was also hobbled from the moment it took control because $95 million was simply too high of a price to pay for the chain in light of the royalties collected from franchisees. The corporation that owned the business, WSI Holdings Corporation, was so burdened with debt that it and its six subsidiaries had assets of just $4.4 million and liabilities of $51.2 million by November of 1992. And at that time, WSI filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, which required the company to present a reorganization plan to the U.S. Bankruptcy Court. In October of 1993, a group of 28 franchisees led by veteran restaurateur David Wachtel bought the chain, now reduced to 320 units, for a modest $10 million. Like Carney, Wachtel believed that Western Sizzlin held great potential. He attributed most of Carney's difficulties in growing the chain to the high price his group paid for the business. Wachtel would later be ousted from the board and filed suit against them for wrongful termination. Today, Western Sizzlin is still around. In 1994, they had as many as 320 locations, but today, the company has about 46 franchises located across 13 U.S. states, generally in the southeast, aside from Florida. It is also a subsidiary of Viglari Holdings, which is controlled by Iranian-American businessmen Sardar Biglari. Western Sizzlin has franchised owned Wood Grill Buffet as well as corporately owned Great American Buffet. The Great American Buffet was founded in 1993 and the Wood Grill Buffet in 1997. These buffets feature homemade foods displayed in a buffet setting with carving stations, exhibition cooking, hot and cold buffets, and a bakery. So what are your favorite memories of this place? Leave a comment or a suggestion for a future video below. Thanks for watching.